I noticed that you're involved in, um, uh, I forget the name of the association, that you're involved in pursuing women's, women's, women's actors' actors? rights? And well, I was uh, the president of the Vancouver Women in Film chapter, which is an international organization that promotes the careers and the development of women in the industry, and I did that for, for some years. I was actually uh, on the board for, I think, four years altogether. Uh, I haven't been as active or on the board in the last while, but I was on the advisory board as well for some years. Yeah, I, I, that's my kind of charity work, is doing some of those nonprofits that promote the arts uh, at a very grassroots level. And so Women in Film was one of them, and I was also uh, on the board and later president of the board of Pacific Cinematheque, which was a small theater uh, for film in, in Vancouver. So that's, yeah. Mm. So what drove you to that? Well, in fact, I had just moved from Los Angeles to Vancouver, and I was involved with a, a writing group at this uh, organization called Praxis, and one of the, the current president of Women in Film was there, and she said, you know, you really, if you want to meet some people in the industry in Vancouver, you should come to a meeting. We went to a meeting, and it just so happened that they were having their... Uh, board elections and I had just come from Los Angeles where I had been vice president of the board of a small theater company and nobody was volunteering and I thought well I'm here I want to be involved mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how we get caught in all the now things is all just bad. put your hand up <laughs> and so I volunteered and it became just a great way to meet people to network and I found that because I was new in the community and I felt a little bit shy Suddenly, because I had a platform and I was representing the membership, I felt much more dynamic when I was going into industry settings. I was always working on behalf of the community, and it really put me out there. And oh, it was just such a great experience. And at that time, the, the membership swelled; it went three times as high as it had been during that time. And I, I was so fortunate. Yeah. So what's the future for you at the moment in acting? I noticed you're doing a few voiceovers and I Voiceover is a very regular gig for me. In fact, it was funny, yesterday I was in, I was in between flights on my way. Of course, it was 24 hours of flying <laughs> <laughs> with, with delays and oh, it was such an intense yes, day of travel. a long way away. Yeah, and I, I got an email from my agency saying, we, we think we have to find you a studio in Melbourne because you have to demo this. I, I can't talk about it because it's a campaign, a very big uh, international campaign and their last one went viral so it's a really fun, awesome project and they wanted me to demo it but apparently schedule wise it just didn't work out so I'm hoping that when I get back to Vancouver I'll get a chance to uh, contribute my voice to this project because I will tweet it, it will be such a blast <laughs> if it all works out. Yeah. yeah, and I just, I uh, an episode I did of Arrow just aired, I think last week, and it's a character that is kind of a background character, she's a, she's an interviewer in fact, so a TV host, and, um, but the, apparently this TV show is going to be coming back and back on Arrow, I was told, so I'm hoping so, that would be really, really That'd fun, yeah. yeah, and I did a Hallmark movie that aired just uh, about a month and a half ago. And I just demoed a really interesting video game, and the character is so cool, so I'm hoping that that... Uh, yeah, so there's all these things that are just sort of on the cusp. A TV series I did last year, just finished airing a couple of months ago, at, but it started airing in UK, on UK Disney, it's called Spooksville. And there's a campaign to bring the show back, and I'm, I'm hoping so. And I just did a, a voice of an evil character called Hickman on this new series, animated series called The Deep by Tom Taylor, who's a Melbourne author. So, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, that'd be great. We'll look forward to that too. we we'll have to look, yeah, yeah. Last year we had Tony Armadella here. Oh, exciting. And we interviewed him. And he was a bit like you on the plane over. He got this sort of request to do an audition. So we ended up filming <laughs> his audition <laughs> for him. Did you? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, and sort of emailing it to his agent. Yeah, he that happens. Back home. He didn't get the job though. Oh, <laughs> He's going to dedicate it to us. Yeah, Jen Spence was uh, with me. Of course, she was on Stargate Universe and she was with me at the Chicago convention um, creation um, in August. And 
I had to do an audition. So she came into my hotel room and, and helped me record it on my iPad. And it's just one of those things you yeah, have you to be. Yeah, you have to do it. Yeah, 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 you just have to be prepared. But for us, it was intriguing watching him from the lines scribbled down to where he goes, oh. all into the whole character. Oh. It, was, it was an amazing experience. Oh, I mean, that must have been on film. So wonderful. Just watching until he got it right and he was just the character. Mm -hmm. What a process to remember the lines and oh, get yeah. his character. Yeah. A lot more respect. Right. Uh, yeah. It's not easy. Yes. It was interesting yeah. watching the character evolve yeah, while he was rehearsing absolutely. it himself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, exciting. It gave me a new insight to how hard it is to get into a character. Really. Yeah. I, I, I is just, that hard for you? Uh, well, it really uh -huh. does depend. And in, in fact, when I'm voicing characters as opposed to acting on screen, I, I actually feel like I... I change while I'm in the studio and I've become a lot less shy. I used to feel like um, I had to sort of keep my instrument very neutral and just use the voice to project. But you know, I've started really having fun with getting really physical <laughs> and now I have no shame about it whatsoever and I just have the engineers just laughing and just telling me they just want to watch what's going on with the body language but I just figure that's just part of the expression yeah, make it fun yeah and then when you're working on camera and of course on stage the physicality has a lot to, to, to do with the development of the character and so there's you know there's a everyone has their own methods but um, for me I also use from the outside in as well as from the inside out so I'll adopt certain physical things that are based on um, what the character is rooted in and, and, and go from there. Or for example, for Arrow for this TV host, I mean, she's very vocal, very verbal, and but very connected. And, and she has to be argumentative, so there's kind of a body language that comes with that. And, yeah. yeah. It's projecting that energy into the role. Yeah, as well yeah. as the whole Because you pick it up. Yeah. You pick it up as an audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the energy's wrong, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Yeah. It's, it's that extra piece. And so. it's interesting, when you work on, on camera, I guess partly because my background was theatre, I, I feel a, a strong connection with the actual physical people who are there, which is the crew, the director, everyone there. So I'm actually connecting energetically with them and my my favorite experiences on camera are are when I get that same feeling that I've had on stage where you, you feel this energy between you and, and everyone else who's there and it's a it's a wonderful experience. You see that too yeah, that comes across. Yeah. I hope so yeah I think it does yeah. yeah that's why it works it sort of gets you right yes, right it's good yeah. Well, go back to Stargate. How did you enjoy the, your, your years as, as a villain uh, in Stargate? <laughs> I, I just didn't get enough. <laughs> More! I loved it. I loved it. To, I mean, just to be given permission to be... Well, I mean, Nirti didn't think of herself as evil. She was, you know, she was just very practical. And, yeah, yeah, had a job you know, to do. And had a did job it. to do, and it was really for science and for development of, you know, very personal reasons too. But um, I just absolutely loved it because it was. Um, well, it's fun to be naughty, isn't it? <laughs> Most actors seem to love naughty roles rather than good yeah. being goodies. Yeah, and also to be in a character. Um, who, ha who was in control in certain moments, or certainly was in touch with her power even when she was in captivity. And to, so to walk onto the set and you have these very dynamic, charismatic characters playing the SG-1 team, and to kind of be able to oppress them at times. Yes. <laughs> That'd be fun. It's all really kind of great, actually. You know, it was fun to kind of put the thumb on Carter and to <laughs> threaten, you know, good old Richard Dean Anderson. It was really, uh, really wonderful. And actually my very favorite moment was the last moment of, I guess it was uh, Metamorphosis, where I'm leaving and, uh, and Richard Dean Anderson is, I, they've, they've negotiated a deal so that I actually get to leave. And there's just a moment with no dialogue where Richard Dean Anderson and I are looking at each other and I'm just letting him know, you know, it's like, you know that I know and I know that you know kind of thing. And uh, Peter DeLuise was the director of that episode and he just gave me so much permission. He just said, milk it. Just milk it. And so RDA and I just had that moment of this completely unscripted communication that 
was rich and really, really fun. <laughs> that fun. Mm -hmm. Apparently he did a lot of ad-libbing. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. In fact, even in that very moment I'm talking about, the, the line was, I say something like, oh, I'm off I go or something like that but you know you may see me again or something I can't remember what my line was but his line was meant to be something like um, I'll keep that in mind and I still remember him saying no 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 I'm gonna say I'll keep that thought alive and his motivation was he just wanted the word alive I was gonna leave and I was alive and he just wanted to integrate that word into that moment and yeah it was he had full permission you know <laughs> Do you find that difficult acting with someone that ad libs a lot, or do you just go? No, you know the one time where I really had a challenge with lines changing on the spot was um, an episode of Smallville I did where I played a doctor and I had to do all of the doctor stuff. Um, Chloe was on her deathbed and I had to talk about the, uh, all the I, blah, blah 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 all the doctor speak blah 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 blah. blah. And they had this uh, doctor consultant on set, and he kept changing my lines. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. I was like, I just got down the end, blah, 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 and all the, you know, acronyms or anagrams. Oh, it was so hard. But, but still, I love a challenge. I don't know how you get over those medical terms. Oh, it's yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. But also in voiceover, I... I I often have to do, well not often, but for, for several years I, I voiced some safety videos for a, a petroleum company and so I had to talk about all of the potential terrible things that can happen to you, your body, your skin and everything else and how to prevent these terrible things. And honestly, it's, it's sad to say how fun it was for me, but it was like getting on a roller coaster because I was saying words that meant nothing to me, but I, I have this natural ability to pronounce words correctly. And I had to say it with compassion and meaning, and, and it would be 25 pages of this stuff. And I literally felt like I was getting on a slide and just like... It, saying words. And saying words, but just giving... Anyway, I just love it. I don't know. It's just in my, in my DNA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess it is. What would you say your favorite role was? My favorite role? Well, you know, I, I have some theater roles that are long in my past, but I've never forgotten them. I did um, a production of The Wool Gatherer by William Master Sibone, and, and she was a, a kind of a troubled, mentally, psychologically troubled, very vulnerable person. And, and she was also very funny, and I've dis discovered that that's my favorite combination, is if there's... A vulnerability that a character has but if there's some humor in it as well I also I, I just really love that although I have to say I like the danger slash kind of sexy thing I guess I'm getting a little on for that but <laughs> who knows who knows but yeah so uh, so I think theater roles stand out for me also you know my very first film role was with um, Adam McGoyan who's a wonderful Canadian director and he cast me in this um, part of this young bride who's just very awkward and she's being interviewed kind of like like this by the wedding videographer who is very socially awkward and asks her all the worst imaginable questions that you could ask a young bride and because it was my first film I, I still felt like I was acting on stage and I was projecting that energy and I was waiting for the laugh and waiting for the tears and and it created this incredible tension and it was in the middle of the night too. I'd had to wait hours and hours. It was like five in the morning. And I still remember the very first time we did this thing. And then Adam said, cut. And everyone burst out laughing. And they'd all been biting on their cheeks to not laugh. And it was just one of those lovely, lovely, it's memorable that way. moments. Yeah. Yeah, we've got the wrap up little sign over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, last question then. Yeah. Um, in the last decade or so, mm -hmm. Uh, Canada seems to have become sort of like a Hollywood support or second Hollywood um, or Vancouver in particular. What do you think's driven that? <laughs> well, that's actually been a very up and down situation. About 10 years ago, there was a lot of uh, there were a lot of complaints from Hollywood that um, Vancouver was kind of they were calling it runaway production because it was cheaper to to produce projects in, in Canada. So so Vancouver, in a way, it was great for training our crews because they did become like a, you know, a secondary production area for, 
for Hollywood, but that was a double-edged sword because for the actors, they were off, often cast in very minor roles and all the major roles were coming up from Hollywood. And then that changed. A lot of our production left when the Canadian dollar changed, our tax, our tax situation changed as well. So it's been sort of up and down. But in the meantime, I think um, Canada has, has been growing its, its individual voice as, as, um, as a media centre. And it's, I think it's less secondary. Because in a way, we can never be a second Hollywood. Because we don't have the kinds of stars that work at the level as Hollywood stars. We don't have the budgets. So, you know, in my view, and I think this is just now starting to happen, it's the really auteur-driven pieces that are going to define Canadian film. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll, we're fortunate that because of our proximity and we're in the same time zone that we will get some work from Hollywood. But I think there's less defensiveness because now it's a global community. I mean, look, look at all the films that come here now, right? And New Zealand and, you know, so, and through the southern United States as well.